What is up guys, Team Yugi Fields here with a deck profile, and boy, let me tell you, it has been one uh, hell of a 24 past hours, because I posted an ABC de deck list yesterday, and uh, I realized I had left improper cards in there, so I had to take it down. I re-record it, and I repost it, and I post a Mech Knight deck profile shortly after, and then just a few hours after that, a ban list drops and it makes cards in both the decks irrelevant for the upcoming format um, so I now have to uh, start putting different deck profiles up and I took those two that I posted yesterday down considering they won't be relevant within the next week and a half uh, or I should say just week basically um, from the time from recording this that is so I am going to show you guys my Altergeist deck profile for the April 1st uh, Master Rule update, whatever you want to call it, um, and, you know, new ban list, new Master Rule format, basically. Um, so we're just going to start off with the Monster Count. So we are playing three Altergeist Marionetter. Um, this allows you to set an Altergeist trap from deck when summoned. It also allows you to special summon Altergeist monsters from your graveyard, uh, which is pretty cool. Three Meliseek, this is the card that I thought that they were going to put to two in the deck, and they didn't do anything about it, which was kind of shocking. Um, so that's another reason to be playing this deck, on top of it being mostly cheap. Um, two Siliquitous, one Multifaker, and one Kung Carry. Um, I was contemplating playing a second one of this, and I just opted not to. I don't think a second one is necessary. Um, but I, I see some people who are only playing one one uh, Silk with us, and I think that you need to play two. Um, I think this is a really good ratio. Just being able to play ten total Altergeist monsters is pretty nice. Then some hand traps. Uh, three Ash. And I am main decking two Nibiru. I think this upcoming format is going to be very combo heavy. Um... And I think main decking the Nibiru's is probably the best bet uh, that you can have. It's just going to help protect you. That way you're not getting OTK'd. Um, and your back row is obviously there to help too. That's it for the monsters though. Moving on to the spells. Uh, three Extravagance. That is the only spell that we are playing. Obviously this is expensive. If you are someone who is playing on a budget, I would advise playing something like maybe two Pot of Duality and one Upstart Goblin. Um, I would not play Pot of Desires because you have the chance of banishing your multi-faker, which you don't want to do. So if you can't afford these uh, and you want to play the deck um, before the reprints of these come out in Toon Chaos, then that's my recommendation. That's the, only, that's the only spells, though. Moving on to the traps. Uh, for the Altergeist-related cards, we play two or three Personal Spoofing, two Altergeist Protocol, and two Altergeist Manifestation. Um, this is pretty standard now. There's not an excessively large amount to go over with this. It's just what we are uh, particularly seeing more and more. Now, we're going to... Uh, I'm going to show you a card next, and this is interchangeable depending on how you want to play the deck. So... I'm playing three Compulse. Um, the reason behind it will be explained in the side deck. Um, this can be Crackdown, it can be Compulse, it could be, even if you want to, Torrential Tribute, whatever your play style is, absolutely go for it. I am playing the Compulses, um, which you'll understand why more as we proceed through uh, the profile. I'm main decking Triple Impermanence. Um, I just think it's really good. So basically we're doing my... Um, doing my personal standard of trying to play anywhere from five to ten hand traps in decks right now for the most part um obviously the three ash the two nibiru and then the three impermanence that's going to equal eight hand traps i think eight is a pretty solid number it mathematically should allow you to see at least one of them in your opening hand um which is obviously pretty helpful I'm also main decking three evenly matched because you are going to lose some dice rolls and you are going to want to have this. Um, so being able to have this is going to be really helpful. And uh, I, I think, you know, with it being a control heavy meta, you can kind of eliminate some cards on the field. Maybe your opponent won't be able to put up a negate and it'll just be a really big board. Um, I just think this is really good to have. And it can bait out a negation too if you need to negate one card that they have. Um, so having that is always nice. Then for the fun stuff, I do play three judgment and two strike. Um, I was going to play a third strike. However, I felt playing Imperial Order was a little more important. Um, I do see this being a very heavy um, 
Shadal format and obviously Dinos with the way the ban list is looking. Um, by Shadal, I do mean Shadal Invoked. Obviously, regular Shadal can be put under that category too. Um, but I think that we're going to see a very large amount of spell-based strategies. So I think playing Imperial Order in the main is a little bit better to shut decks out uh, rather than playing a third uh, Solemn Strike. So that is it for the main deck. We're going to hop over to the extra deck now. Uh, now we play three Altergeist Hextia and one Prime Banshee. So the extra deck is not overly significant in Altergeist because it doesn't 100% need it. There are times where it will be, obviously, if you want to call it necessary, you can. Um, but I consider it more of an accessory than anything else. And it's not something that you're always going to need to utilize because you'll have other ways around it. But Altergeist Hexia is still a very good card. Prime Banshee has its t has its times where it is good, um, but it's just not as good as your your Hexia. But that's okay. It's still uh, still pretty standard. Then I'm playing three Link Karibo and one All Mirage. Um, so I'm back and forth between between playing three and one or playing two and two. Um, I personally just like playing the three and one. I think Link Karibo is a better card overall. Um, so I would personally stick with that strategy. Then I play a Nightmare Phoenix and a Nightmare Unicorn. Like I said, it, they're just there as accessories. Uh, then Link 4 is 1 Zero Boros, 1 Boros Sword, and 1 Appalooza. Um, this can be either Appalooza or you could make it Avermax if you wanted to. Um, it's kind of just your, your personal preference. And then some cards that should give you more clues uh, if the Compulse wasn't enough as to what I'm playing in the side deck. Um, but I'm playing one war one uh, Last Warrior from Another Planet and one Naturia Exterior. Um, so I'm sure you guys are kind of figuring out what I'm playing in the side deck by now. Um, hopefully. <laughs> but we're going to hop onto the side deck now because those were the last cards in the extra. So I'm side decking uh, just three more hand traps and that would be the Artifact Lancia. Um, Dinos really get hurt by this. Invoked is hurt by this. Um, Orcus, which by the way, if you didn't know, Orcus is going to be insane in this format. Um, Orcus gets hurt significantly by this. So this is probably going to be one of the hand traps to play going forwards. I think more people should realize that. Uh, no spells in the, the side deck, so we're going to go hop into the traps. Uh, Two-dimensional barrier, it's good against a multitude of things, um, so playing it's pretty solid. Two heavy storm duster for all the uh, back row heavy stuff that you could possibly come across. Two waking the dragon, yes, this is the reason. Um, obviously, you're seeing a pattern here as to why there are normal spells. Um, these are for your uh, worry from another planet and interior exterior to be summoned. And then alongside that is the card that I'm sure all of you are figuring out by now, um, Double Trap Trick. So Compulse and Imperm are all normal trap cards, uh, which is pretty important. So those by themselves, that's already two targets. And then you have three, four, five alongside the Trap Tricks. So you have targets that you can play. Um, which I think is really important, being able to do that. So I really like this so far. Um, if your opponent activates Lightning Storm, well, you have Trap Trick set, you can chain it and then set Awaking the Dragon, and then you could get your Waking the Dragon to summon either of these afterwards, um, which is just a ridiculous play, uh, but it's really, really solid. So that is the reason behind that. Then we do play some continuous spells just because they're really good. Uh, two anti-spell. This is another way to kind of slow down your opponent's usage of uh, Lightning Storm, being able to force them to hold off from using it for a turn. And now the last card in here, which I'm going to show you, um, it makes one of the cards, one of the Trap Trick targets, I don't want to say it makes it irrelevant or not as significant, but... I felt that it was necessary considering what the meta is looking like. So I am talking about non-fusion area. Um, so this was turned on to me recently through a striker deck profile um, that I saw. And I've been playing striker a lot lately because I really think that this still has potential. Thank God Wood Wanker went to two. That makes it even cooler. Um, obviously it's not nearly close to the best deck by any stretch of the imagination. But I've been playing it for fun and I've been finding a decent amount of success with it. Um, Non-Fusion Area, however, is just an amazing card against Shadal, against Invoked. Um, 
it, it does so much for you. Obviously, Instant Fusion got hit, which um, really doesn't make too much of a difference because you're more worried about Invocations. You're worried about Shadal Fusion, uh, El Shadal Fusion, all those kind of cards. So being able to flip this as a uh, chain to one of your opponent's fusion spells is crazy to me. Um, it, it just does so much, and chances are your opponent isn't going to even know what to do with themselves because nobody prepares for this card, uh, which is even funnier. But that is the side deck, which then wraps up the entirety of the deck profile, uh, main, extra, and side. It's a very, very um, interesting deck to play. Typically, I say fun deck. I'm not going to say fun deck because it's a trap deck. I never take any trap deck under the classification of being fun. I think it's there and it's solely intended to completely slow your opponent down and just grind them out until they they basically um, concede. But the deck is pretty powerful going into the upcoming format. Most of the top um, ranked players on Dueling Book currently um, are either playing with this or playing against it. So it's popular. The numbers are definitely showing true to how powerful the deck is. Um, just being able to play so many trap cards and negate so much of the deck is absolutely crazy. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the uh, comment section down below. And for right now, this is Team Yugi Fields signing out.